This is the Grandastic Podcast. All right, we should. We're recording. Okay, welcome to Grandastic. Here we are. You're with Jorge. How's it going, my guy? Ah, I'm okay. I'm doing pretty well. Um, yeah. Um, I'm at, I'm at a pretty pretty good pretty good uh point in my in your life. In my life, I feel. That's um, awesome. Yeah. How how are you doing? You know, we're in a weird time. That's <laughs> that's for sure. You know, I uh, thought life was already weird. But now with, you know, America and everything that's happening and in mm-hmm. a pandemic, mm-hmm. it didn't see any of this coming. And then the job market fucking sucks. So, you know, that's going to really hurt the most. But yeah, man, it's I'm so happy to have you. I'm for, first of all, shout out to you for even hitting me up. And like, because I, I asked people who wants to come on Grantastic and you commented. And it was it's so cool because like I listen to your music way back. like. Like we're talking about like rap can't save me like that era or the candy man and all that music because, and I, and you know, I don't know who showed it. I think it was from my friends or maybe someone from Brockhampton who reposted on SoundCloud, but I just remember listening to that shit. I bumped that shit in high school in my headphones and I was just like, cause you go hard. You keep that old school rap going, which I respect and love, man. Like, it it was good to go back to the memories and listen to some music like that. That's really funny because um, actually yesterday I was texting Julia because she lives in New York now, mm-hmm. and we're not the same like creative partners that we used to be, but our souls like have this unlet goable connection in this uh, world where like our dreams used to be synced up. Nowadays, it's just more like we go through. I mean, there there are like things that we're all going through because they're like cultural and because we're all in, in the pandemic and the job market, like you said. But mm-hmm. um, but we were I was listening back to actually just yesterday, like took this song off of private that I never released that she always wanted me to release. That was like I heard myself as like a 17 year old rapper, which is when a lot of that stuff was released. That's for the age. Could we I, I, I got to like we just got to <laughs> break it down you know the history and going back because you I mean because like you yeah. know uh i didn't know too much about you you know what i mean there was nothing like i just knew and also you had maybe i'm jumping to the conclusion but any i'll just say now you had oh, this man. amazing yeah. you had this amazing sweatshirt the black and white you know just a boy just a girl half like you know half white half black you know what i'm talking about that old uh yeah, yeah. those were really popular I was like, I remember I was trying to get one and they just sold. And I was just like, Oh, you were one of those people. I'm like, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I, I like, bro. I tried to help people, but there was, there was like, they sold out so quickly. They, I mean, we could sell them in a day. So, bro, those, yeah, I definitely was one of those people. And like, I still want one of those because those sweatshirts are still the bomb. People, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, go look this shit up because. It's still, it, I don't know. I don't know what makes it super cool. I like the words on it. And I like how it's split in half. I think there's something about that just catches my eyes. I think um, there's something that's like my creative, the things that I do creatively are like very much linked to, to a therapeutic process. Mm. So like, and even like, I'm more trying to get back to that, just like not, analyzing things and not um being too much up here and and just living and kind of like trusting being in the moment yeah the thing that i trusting what i am because that's that's what i was doing a lot at that time um uh and that concept of just a boy just a girl when i actually like looked at it and try and understood what i what i think i was doing it was really like it was it was like an antidote to anxiety because mm. what I did was is I took this concept of I'm just a boy, I'm just a girl, and I would just literally simplify everything down to this concept and and it 
it like would relieve so much anxiety and I would talk to other people who had a similar effect with those hoodies and they just like they looked the way that they looked um and the ones that were the if you remember the ones that were like the uh the like the hoodies stitched together yeah that's the one I'm talking about those stitched yeah. ones yeah I see people doing that now and I'm like they're just copying your trend, man. Like you were ahead of the game in the wave, but you make a good point about like the anxiety in the boy and the girl. I feel that I think you and London O'Connor were on a wave there and maybe Brockhampton too. Like, you know, London wears dresses, you know, and I respect the hell out of that. And like Ian with the nails, you know, I, bro, I, I, I appreciate it because I think we're in a society where you have to like, males have to have look like certain, certain way or whatever. And then females this way. It's like, why does it matter? Why can't a guy wear a dress or a skirt or do makeup? I don't think there's anything wrong with that, you know? And then people like to put terms on you and like, or labels, I should say. And it's just kind of fucked in my mind. It's like, we don't need that. If a guy, a guy wants to wear a dress or a girl wants to wear some baggy shorts, just let them. Yeah, we're, I, I understand. We're, we're definitely way more complicated than that. I mean, um, I wear... Uh, I wear I wear just what I like, mm-hmm. and I feel like my appreciation for this world and what is inside and what is in this world definitely goes way beyond um, the boundaries of gen- like I haven't been to the mall in like four or five years, just because it's so obviously like mm-hmm. here are the here are the men's clothes here are the women's clothes, um, mm-hmm. and you want uh like and then within that it's like you get like blue or gray or this and it there's just so much more and Mm. so i'm uh yeah way more interested in that so i feel it kinds of things and i experience myself as like lots of different selves Mm. no i get that man i mean I feel that hundred percent about feeling different selves and just different feelings or, or different, like, I don't know, I think clothes or whatever, how you d- design or what you look, you know, it, it makes you feel a certain way. So I, I get it. it's a way of expression, you know, it's a way of expressing yourself. And um, I think that's very key and important, but like, you know, we, we, we got, we can go anywhere with this podcast, you know, I just so many questions. So I guess like, let's just like, started in like you know the music you know that's how i first found you you know yeah Um, yeah. so when did you i guess when did you start making music and you know what got you inspired and stuff um i always wrote i always like wrote actually i I really think i started with writing Hmm. because i would write these poems and they were like very deep and i was like a really little kid and i wrote this poem read it to my mom about the devil and she was mm. probably a little scared. Uh, but I had, and I used, and I read all kinds of stuff. I read like Walt Whitman. Mm. And, um, I read like, uh, uh, what's his name? I literally even got a play about it. Um, Edgar Allan Poe. I read Edgar Allan Poe. And I think that with rap, it's almost like rap is a way where you can put words together that it's poetry, but it's almost like its own form form of poetry. Yeah. So it let me just kind of like go really loose with words or in some ways, like I could use metaphors and I could like, explain a feeling or I could go places that I couldn't go in the like normal way of speaking. Yeah. So that's definitely what kind of like, I feel like was kind of getting me closer to it. Um, and then uh, the first, the first songs that I made were on GarageBand. And I think like, I definitely learned to rap. Um, I definitely like, worked at it because I, I like, I would put words together. And, and at first, I remember when I first rapped, it was almost like I had to learn that the difference between like talking and rapping and just like how 
was in your mouth and it was it was just a thing that i slowly like learned just by trying yeah. um yeah and i went through like my own corny rap phase that i had to go through um until i like more and more discovered me inside of there but i, would, I, I made like a remix to to an asher roth song mm. um and i called it high school idol because i was like in, nested in this like uh high school like we would throw parties and and i was like kind of it was me and i was also performing and it was me at the same time um and yeah Oh, I'm just so vague. <laughs> no, no, bro. It's a, it's a while. It's been a while. So I, I get it. You know, there's no, there's no worry about it. But you're from Texas, uh, or no? I'm from St. Pete, but I actually I found. So I I found Brockhampton on the internet because Kevin okay, had a song it was like like earlier music that was like um, when he had orange hair. It was like a it was called like bubble or something and it oh was, wow yeah we're going you're going real cool. all the yeah. way back shit and, <laughs> and i i kind of like the song but i like them more i just liked who they were and mm, yeah i remember and julie and i were just like constantly like all we would do is just um we would just get up and just ideas and just live and just create things constantly so um we one of us messaged them on instagram and then we ended up going and flying to Texas and staying wow. with them. Wow. And, and we were just, as soon as I met them, like this is still a thing in my life that I like haven't, um, that sometimes I don't think about because it does make me sad sometimes that like, uh, like I love my, I've like discovered now finally like some friends that I like really, really. Connected with. Like, really connect with. Um, mm -hmm. And and then, but they were definitely some, they were people that like, like when I first met Romil, we both said that it was like, we had like been to a, a like summer camp together, but not in this life. Like we were just like, boom. Yeah, I feel that you meet those type of people who just are on that wavelength and you're just like, you're so glad and blessed, you know, and yeah. the friendship just grows together. And yeah, it's just, but that's awesome. You, you met them and you just kept in touch and like, did you, I'm assuming when you, did you, so when you went out with them, did you like out to Texas, did you stay there for how long? Just for a while? Did you ever go back? You know? I think we went twice, two or three times. And I stayed there for a week. And we went, we went like through the like South by Southwest circuit with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, once. And then another time we just kind of stayed with them while they were recording. Um, and this was like when they were in this like very, bummy i hate that word but like bummy stage of like when you know, when kevin was tweeting about can someone buy me a pizza that kind of what yeah. i was about to say is i was in the yeah. house when pizzas were being sent to the house yeah i re yeah i remember those tweets so yeah <laughs> um wow yeah i remember all of them like um when amir that was when amir was in the group too i remember meeting amir and um uh bareface and yeah, the whole gang, you know, from everyone. They're all as they're all as human as you could possibly imagine. Like no, for, for real. As kind and real and alive and human and people as you could possibly imagine. No, I I, I believe it a hundred percent because, um, you know, I DM Dom whatever or tweet at Dom or something, and he actually responded, and then. From there, we actually met him when he moved to SoCal and he picked me up at like CSU when they were living in that kind of area. And like you said, they're just, they're just like us. They're just normal people who are just like you said, the realists, or whatever. And it was cool seeing them all. And um, yeah, I remember that time, you know, that it seems like simpler times and then life gets a little crazy. It was, it was a very simple time. And at the same time, I think there were things that I was going through at that time that I didn't know how to face at that time that I didn't understand. Just mm. like strange currents inside of stuff that I later had to really work out. Mm. Um, and I think was a, a big part of why I just, I like kind of took a 
hiatus from music. Um, yeah. No, uh, yeah, because it's in your lyrics. I think like when you say rap can't save me or street sweepers, <laughs> like those, like, yeah. you, like that, like take those two songs, or I guess let's take rap can't save me. That was like, I even saw the music video was cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more serious versus like if you take the candy man, you know, you like, uh, you know, there's more candy man was like, every, you know, Brock Hampton's in it. And like, you guys are having fun. But then rap can't save me. It's like a black and white kind of serious kind of, uh, so I feel like there's different stages in your life as you're expressing on what was happening during those times. Yeah. Um, I need to do that. I mean, like street sweepers, uh, uh, I feel like was, was more like the serious song. If there was a serious song, um, yeah, I was in, I was just, I was in touch with a certain wave, kind of like you said earlier that hmm. now, like I'll hear music, I'll hear music now and be like, in that song, I was like hinting at like what this is going to sound like. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it was kind of like the like rap, but mixed with punk, but mixed with yeah. um, these like big like harmonies and stuff um, that, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that song. I still, I have friends all the time that um, tell me about that music and I revisit it. I honestly, when I revisit music, I don't even revisit that stuff now. I revisit like my first mixtape, which oh wow, we probably don't even know about. But I made that when I was like, I made it with a with a, a video camera mic, um, and it's just like it's such it's the most like beautiful can like um, like. It's it's really embarrassing, like some of the lines that are in there and some of the like way that I talked about, like I had such this like like a uh, kind of um, not macho, but like my idea of women was like pretty. It, it was like definitely a fantasy in there, mm. but um, but the like light of who I am was just is just so present in that music that I go back to that music when I like. Yeah. And like I, where like where is it? Yeah. I feel like at a young age we're definitely just trying to figure out that light as you worded it. Um because everyone's trying to figure themselves out, especially in those teens, you know. Um I, I was trying to figure myself out, you know, because we're all confused and this whole social norm of just like, you know, I don't know what high school is like for you, but for me it's like everyone had these little groups, you know, you had like yeah, the lacrosse team here, the football team here, or all the sports people here, and then all these people here. And it's like, um, that wasn't me. I, like, I jumped around in every group. You know, I didn't really feel like I had, like, I mean, I had like my close friends here and there, but like, I just like being with everyone. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to feel like we were like, um, you know, we had to be in a certain group or, per se. That's to me, I didn't like that. I think that's what high school, they try to make it feel like that, and it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, that's really, I can relate to that a lot. And I think the, I think that the, I think that the, the self that you are, which for a lot of people are unconscious, is unconscious. Mm -hmm. Um, the, is, and if you, like, from a spiritual perspective, I think that that self is neutral. Its goal isn't to like, your goal really isn't to like form these and clicks and, group so that you can be against um like i remember i had an aunt that told me because because my because also like being a rapper and with the family that just like was its own journey um but like i had an aunt that told me that like if your entire voice is uh made to be against something you have no voice mm -hmm. and that and that like the 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 amount that that just stayed with me and I yeah. took process that I could like it was obviously so meaningful um but I actually like literally when my my um senior year of high school I uh I left and dual enrolled at this music school and there's like a loophole um where I could um basically not take any high school classes and and just kind of like finish early college stuff and and go to music school at the same time because I didn't want the like high
I, I didn't want the high school experience. I just felt like I had grown out of it. And I was mm-hmm. just kind of like, what is going on here? Um, this doesn't really make sense to me. And I'm just wanting something more. Um, and also I was like in the same place. I was just like, I liked everyone. I tried to like everyone for who they were. And I didn't, and, and I felt like the way that high, high school is insane. Like high school is insane. And it makes us do insane things and act in crazy ways to each other. And then at, like, if you see someone from high school now, yeah, if you were like kind of friends you'd be like oh and if you mm-hmm. weren't and if some and if you did some like horrible things to each other because of the environment that you were in it's just awkward it's like why were we obviously now when you're outside of that you don't act like yeah that. exactly and it's just like you're just those were times where we were just being like just stupid and um we're thinking yeah, man. I don't know. I think that's something I kind of thought about before, you know, high school reunion and stuff and seeing what, how we all turn out. Cause you know, that's something, you know, you see in movies or whatever and like, or your parents tell you about it. And it's like, I don't know, like I have And that's the thing, like, like the people through my high school or the people who I'm so close with, that maybe like, I don't know, four or five, everyone else don't know what's happening with their lives. I mean, good, like, and I don't care if we do meet each other, if I do see you, of course, I'm going to say hi and be nice. You know, I'm not going to act like I don't know them. That's just fucked. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but like, I realize the ones that I'm close with are the ones that stick with me. But other than that, but that's another thing. Like, I feel like even in high school, I was kind of meeting people online, you know, the Twitter, Twitter, I think was Twitter and SoundCloud was where really was where, how I was meeting all these like musicians uh, online. Twitter was so yeah exactly that's how i met everyone and um and those people are still my closest friends i feel like first when i was in high school i mean i was still close to people in high school but everyone i was meeting on twitter they understand you know we they're on the same mindset as me and uh feeling the same way you know making the music and just was trying to find a way how to express themselves to the fullest and um you know, because sometimes it's hard to express yourself at that age when you're 17 or 18 or 16 or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. I think um, that like unadulterated expression mm. is something that's like the most, one of the most like crucial parts of who I, I feel like I'm, I am. Yeah. I'm supposed to be here. No. Yeah. Um, it's not a constant thing. Which, like, for me, the pandemic is, in some ways, I mean, I'm very privileged. I just want to, first, I have a lot of privilege. So, like, the pandemic, in some ways, has been, my my, image in my mind is just really funny. Um, uh, The pandemic, in some ways, has been really awesome for me because it was sort of like everything was taken away. I went and I, I went back to stay at my parents' house, which this is my parents living room um and I kind of like had this uh this um COVID romance Mm. that what there was from afar where I had this super strong connection with someone and they sort of just like I sort of just kept getting reflected to me like music is the thing every this is the thing that always happens to me is like when I start to stray, sometimes I like you need to, um, like if you're just banging your head against a wall, you should, you know, go for a walk or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to music, it's like every time I've tried to stray from it, there's been like these just loud things that come to me and are just like. So part of like this relationship, I actually started to make music. Like I hadn't been mm-hmm. in a long time through this. And now yeah. I have like almost, I have a, a bunch of stuff that I haven't released yet. And like, a, and I've just been making stuff as much as I can. So. Yeah, man, that's exciting because I know you dropped, uh, was, is it an LP or an album? I know I, 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 I saw you dropped it and then I heard one song. I didn't get to listen to the full thing yet, but uh, it's on Spotify. Was that a full, was that an LP or an album? What would you call it? An album. Um, okay. And yeah, I think it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good album. I mean, for mm-hmm. like the production that 
for like where I was at because I had just come out of like this long relationship where I made one song during that relationship and then I came out of this relationship and was just like in the worst place I had been in my life mm. so that's the way to conceptualize of it um but like and then I made music almost out of necessity and those songs um yeah I, I made an album and like I produced some of it and I worked with Jack um who do you know Jack Jack McCoy the name okay people have said this name to me I have not met Jack McCoy but I heard of Jack McCoy yeah he he, he just he just released um uh his first like debut I think it's an album well, shout out Jack McCoy. Maybe if he wants to come on to Grand Cat, Grandtastic, it'd be great to have him here too. But yeah, yeah, you um, check it out um, because so he helped me produce some of the songs. Where like, what would happen is I would just like, like because bef- I never was able to produce my own music. I always mm-hmm. rapped on other people's beats, and whenever I tried to produce my own music, there was like this awkward, just wasn't. I just wasn't. It's a whole different mindset. So yeah, yeah I didn't have that mindset. Um, and then after I honestly believe that through like the pain that I was in and um, spiritually to just the depth that I found, I just like four songs that I just produced just like came out of me. And, I, and all I was doing was just. Yeah, making- man. I, I think music is a beautiful way. And you, you hit it uh, an important point, like how sometimes it can like, it drives you, you know, it like, and like this pain you talk about, like when you, I don't know why, why this came to my head, but when you said that and like how it can make you feel, the first thing that came to my head was Sad Saturdays by Joba because there, <laughs> was, there was a, that song, I remember that song. yeah, because I don't, I forget what it was, but there was like, it was black and there was, there was a light and there was Joba's face and he was just kind of explaining what the whole idea of the song was and, you know, about like this girl and she was kind of playing games and like, I forget what the whole detail was, but like I felt because the lyrics and everything in the chord to use and all the like the harmonics and the expression, you can feel it. You know what I mean? And like um, I think with some types of music, there's like you can just feel that person's like pain or excitement or whatever that type of emotion is. And it's very unique how our brains or our bodies can just know what to do, like react per se, you know, fight or flight kind of situation. Yeah, so um, I'm really interested in emotion, and I'm really yeah. interested in emotion in emotion concepts. And in some ways, I believe that the emotion concepts laden in songs are sort of these things. So I have to turn on the light. I feel like this light is making me anxious. Um, I I think that the the emotion concepts that are in that are in in songs. Um, are they're valuable and i'm not i don't know if i can completely articulate how they're valuable Mm -hmm. okay so like do you know that song by incubus um uh drive yeah how's it go again it's um i mean it's been a minute but i can you can definitely pull it up or like yeah i'm i mean i need it's like that's like Um. A lot of people fear. Yeah, here, let me pull it up real quick. Um, but I know that that's a that's been a minute when you mentioned that. Yeah, so good. It to have a way. To yeah. the mm-hmm, there you go. Yeah, lately. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay, yeah. And I'll be the one behind. Mm. So like yeah, that as an emotion concept, he's maybe conceptualizing of like the unknown, mm. and they're like sensations that you feel when you listen to that song, and in real time, they're like they're transformed through the way that he, the the thing like the story that he goes through about like everyone is driven by this fear and um and um and he sees himself being driven by this fear into this kind of like predictable day in day out patterns which many people are and then um 
slowly he, he realizes that he's the one behind the wheel that he that he has choice and that he's free to choose and, and get exactly out. and you go through that with him so in some ways it's like i feel like we i'm really interested in like um i'm interested in becoming someone that has like a perspective and, emo- and concepts for for my emotions that are I feel like valuable to the world. Yeah, I I feel it. I understand that. And I think with something crazy, like I think we're all on our own journey, you know, every single one of us. And and I, I, this is like kind of how I've been realizing how I see life. We're our own like composition, of, you know, our own musical piece, you know, like from the start where we were born and then it the song doesn't end until the day we die, until the heartbeat stop our brain, whatever. And, um, and we don't know what notes are going to come in or what, like, you know, uh, you know, what parts are going to come in or instruments are going to come in or out. And that's how I've been realizing life, you know, let's take, let's say you're like a P we're the piano and we are just playing the melody or chords or whatever. And sometimes we'll have friends who are like the upright bass who comes in. And then sometimes we'll have, you know, um, the trumpet or whatever, but then sometimes they'll leave us, but we'll find new instruments that will join us in our composition and that's just life and i think it's important with like you let's take the car i guess example you know um people like to think of the head like where am i going to turn i'm going to turn left or right but you can't worry about the future you know it's so important to live in the now in the moment because um our brains like to scramble and like to like try to figure out everything about where we're going to go in life and you just can't force it. You know, the universe will say, fuck you. And just like tell you, no, I'm not going to let you decide or sorry, or swerve. And it's like, whatever. And you, yeah. you you just have to embrace it. You can't fight it. And then sometimes in our lives, everything seems great. And then something randomly tragic happens. Mm-hmm. And then we like to blame it on someone else or just get angry or something. But I realize there's no one to blame. You just have to and it's hard and it's hard just to say that because our emotions at the moment is it's not that easy, but you have to just go with it and take it in as much as you can little by little and then really fully embrace it and then grow with it. I realized, you know, just from, you know, just over time in life and just learning things and I'm going to go back to London. London has really like taught me a lot of that. Like, you know, we're our own flower and, it, we decide how much water and sun we, we really want for us to shine and flourish. So, yeah, um, I, had that, I had a moment like that earlier, actually. Yeah. So, we created this. We were the one who made this happen. Mm, exactly. I, and I, you can get really, it's easy to get lost. And I feel like, like, when what happens with me with this pandemic, and maybe it's the function, like the way that my memory works sometimes, because. Yeah. It's like, I remember I was in the car with someone that I was dating and I was just so frustrated because I was like, because my memory can just be so like shallow and mm-hmm. I can, um, other times not so much, but like, but there were definitely like whole periods of my life where I was just like, and she was, and she was just like always trying to re like reframe things and make it positive. And she was like, that's because you're like meant to be here. And like, um, sometimes I, sometimes I want to, want to think that that's true. Like I'm a very present, I'm a very like, when, when I feel like really solid, I feel like, and I have like a very solid sense of self that I like really, really love. I'm like super freakishly creative and I'm in a moment. Yeah. There's nothing there's there's nothing else to remember if I do need to remember. Um, yeah, I yeah. I um, get it. I I get it. I mean, you know, I we get in those, and it's interesting how our brains, you know, gets in that zone and uh, think things. And like when you're creating, you do you kind of. I guess I guess yeah, you kind of forget, or at the moment you're just really in tuned or focus on that particular thing. And that other stuff that you forget is just kind of gone for a moment, but then comes back once you complete that thing you're focused on. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a funny thing. And I think it's our, in some ways, it's our relationship with our mom. There's actually, there's a psychologist, Artie Lang, that coined the term psychophobia, which mm. he talked about how the, in the West, we have this intense fear of our own minds. And if you, and like the DSM was um, a perfect example of this because they, there have been many, um, many versions of the DSM where they just called all kinds of things a disorder like things that are that really things that aren't really even harmful or that are really dangerous um so so yeah and i and i think that like like okay the song the womb if you if you do end up listening to um i definitely will the album that song i fully trusted my mind and it came mm-hmm. together like some of it was um channeled some of it i would then i would read a poem and I, would, I wrote something over here and then i had like this long note stuff over here and it and then i just had like uh just keys and and i just like had this kind of um that melody come out and then all of a sudden all of that like the the uh what I wrote over here in this poem, like all of these things that I, when I let myself just go where I wanted to go and I kind of had like that kind of relationship with my mind, I was amazed at my mind. Like I literally like had just this, like this just love and appreciation for my mind as if like it was something over, over here. Like <laughs> it, that's, that's how, so I, that's the, so I definitely have experiences of, um that where that that's really possible and that can work yeah and uh-huh. i think it's good to keep that you know mentality of that you know of your mind where you just love it because you know we we our brains like our brains like to our brains like to do interesting things to our minds if that makes sense it, it likes to like be we're in this positive mindset or everything's good and everything and then all of a sudden especially i guess for me like at night uh, that's when like darkness or like sadness uh, plays in for me. And like, you just got to realize everything's fine or you just got to be around people and you got to work with it. You know, you got to figure out what you, what to do and not do. So if, yeah, you, yeah because I don't know, I, in the morning or the daytime, I am just zealous and I'm just out there with smiling and, just trying to give the best positive energy as much as I can to the world. Cause that's what we need right now in life. But at nighttime, um, it definitely gets dark. I don't know, maybe it's cause there's no sun now or something, but, uh, I definitely get a little bit gloomy, but, um, that's really interesting. Cause I have like virtually the opposite experience because for me, when they're like, well, I, I get really over, I get overwhelmed really easily just because I'm, I'm, more and more aware I've become I just can take in so much information and Mm. some ways that's why like even this format is sometimes um uh like confusing not confusing like uh see that I'm getting overwhelmed (laughs) all good man it's all good and then and when it's dark like the less thing the less like when I can turn off some of those inputs then Mm. See. It's like in that quiet, I, then I'm like, uh, like then I can kind of, cause there's less. And so there's I, less. So there's more easy to process it all. I get it. Exactly. But yeah, I get it. And I think, but that's, that's the, that's the most beautiful thing about humans that we are all different and we all handle things so differently. And that's what makes life great and meeting people and learning from one another because for me, I, I don't understand that, but I want to understand it. And I want to understand someone's other point of view and how they see it because it's so magnificent and it's cool to see because, man, I wish I could see that. That would be really cool to see. Um, you know, I think that's a cool way to look at things in life. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't mind experiencing your darkness. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It's, it's just grooming, yeah. 
oh hello what is yeah i'd just be curious that's awesome but then i guess another um just to learn you know because i i know you as like a like a rapper musician artist but have you ever done anything else outside of like music do you ever because like i know like we talked about in the beginning you know yeah. you, you making like the sweatshirts and stuff do you also do clothing or photography or art or anything else or clothing i have i haven't um done i mean now's the time clothing is something that i've i've like always had ideas for and i've made some clothes and the way that i dress is like a lot of people that know me or, or that's something that, oh, that's um that's something that uh, is really meaningful to me. Um, yeah. So I kind of do, I do that in whatever way that I can, um, but I haven't made clothes yet. Um, and I'd like to do that. Um, but I have done and still do many different things. Um, and kind of like producing music has been a new thing now because now like um i have a couple of friends who who are like discovering themselves and um i just want to like i i've kind of like sat in the producer role a little bit and been like oh i want to hear them do this song that i wrote mm -hmm. and produced and um see what they sound like over it so i'm just kind of like um, tr I'm kind of like trying, I've tried all different kinds of things. Um, my, my, my life is currently in a place where, um, I want to do me. I want to make my own music and I want to make music for people's podcasts and like shows and stuff just because mm -hmm. I can make like more like sporadic songs that are shorter and there's just like they don't have to be it's a it's a different mode um and then the other thing that i'm doing is like like i just got a job um and i'm sorry about the job hunt and i hope that that uh that you some some light opens up for you because i know how that is for so many people um, yeah man it's it's definitely and the part is is like doing something you love you know what i mean like the music is like like the goal of course is you know to make music but like but you gotta keep it like realistic with yourself you know to the point at a certain age where you gotta get a job and you gotta pay bills or find a place to sleep and um so now we're, we're trying to find something where we can like have a job but something in music or something you know or whatever it takes or maybe become a music teacher you know anything just because I can't see myself do the nine to five. That's just not who I am or whatever. It's too, that's not where my mindset is at. Yeah. It would be draining. And you'd just yeah. like, what am I? Um, yeah. Um, so, so I, yeah, I'm getting a job because like, it's a good environment, the place that I found and it has mm. nothing to do with, it doesn't really have anything to do with what I want to do. Um, but it's a pretty good environment and I, can make some money and and sometimes i am able to just like detach the that meaning anything about me or that meaning anything about music and sure you get off work and like when i've when i make the my favorite way to make music is i just live as that thing mm. like it's like a it's really like a, a form of magic I, and yeah. that's what i've done for so many i literally just it's like this I just absolutely embody what it is that I want to be like through every block that there could possibly be. And I just make things from that place. Yeah. And that's beautiful. You know, that's a great thing to do. And, and it's also good. I think I forget who was telling me this, but you know, it's good to separate, you know, um, you know, something you love for something work, you know, unless you can like, so like let's say like you're just like an artist but you're scrapping to pay rent and stuff it music doesn't become fun then it becomes you know 
it's you know it's how you're you're having anxiety and you're worrying like i can't make these bills and stuff and i think and it's it good squashes it you don't you lose that creativity it makes bad music not for yeah like, Enough. I wish I had a more. No, but you're right because you you just make you uh you you kind of I think what you're saying and I get it is that you you make music that you're not true to yourself. You're just trying to make a quick song that you know like the average person will like to hear. You know, instead of experimenting. There's songs that sound like that are that song. Mm-hmm. Which is something that I have to do because of the culture that we live in and how much information it is, you have to realize a lot of this stuff is the same stuff. Yeah, it really is. And that's why the one thing I'm just so um, fascinated with, like, I, I don't even know what the right word would be, but like, I guess our kind of peers, if that makes sense, like, you know, like growing up to like your music or London's or John Walls or Brockhampton's or you guys, um, the music was different. The music was totally different. It was nothing that no one has ever heard. And um, that's something truly beautiful. And you still today make uh, amazing music that's still different, you know, that mm -hmm. people people try to, you know, copy, but they can't because they're not you. And that's something that they can never take from you guys. Wow. And Yeah, that's, really, that's special. Yeah, bro, it is special. And it's really cool to see it. And it's cool to like, talk to you guys about it because the music like even you're telling me you, you take the beach or whatever you, you your lyrics your what you talk about that's what makes it special too in its own way you know that's what makes you stand out from anyone else and um i'm always trying to fit as much of it as i can mm -hmm. and sometimes i'm like and it, and there's never like an endedness of it of course but i i can always tell where i'm like oh, the lyrics could have been more of this, or oh, I could have rapped, like, I would have gone back and rapped more like this. But you, like, as much as I was able to shove into this moment in this song, I, like, I have, there has to be a process where I have, yeah. like, love and appreciate. Like, that's really how I became good at music, is I just, like, appreciate and love and, like, just go in and, like, as much as i can just yeah well like, have, have you have you ever like when you when you were like back then and i guess today do you ever collaborate with like old friends and everything per se do you ever or do you want to work with new people like I, if that makes sense new people i still send julia stuff um but even that i felt like i needed to stop sending her some stuff because i'm just aware of myself and mm -hmm. like the like where it's coming from and i might and i had to stop relying on her as sort of this mirror mm. because we were so close when we made music no oh, yeah I to start to to just kind of you gotta be your own person you gotta show your own road i, I get that um, and, and, it's, and it's hard man i get it yeah it, it's it's i mean i attach super strongly to people so when i really attach to people and sometimes it's been hard for me to let go mm. i um, think that that that's something that we all i think struggle in you know it's it like even me you know i feel it when you get attached to people uh it's hard and i feel like for friendships you know like or just people you make music with you know like um you just keep making music with them and it's great but then you realize you gotta like they're not always going to be there. They're going to want to collab with other people. And you got to realize, like, I do what's best for me. And, like, I got to, like, like you got to put yourself in this mindset where um, if you didn't have these people, where would I stand off? Like, how would I do by myself if I didn't have the support? And it's good to try to, like, it's always great to collab. I and mean, that's, like, the most beautiful thing. I love collabing with people because that's sometimes. That's what I'm just learning. Yeah. I never used to feel that way. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy. And but once you can learn how to make music on your own and like be independent, it's amazing. And then people see that, see where your like hard work is or see your type of skills or craft, then you you get this flock of all these other new people who want to work with you. And then the beautiful thing which I love, I love bringing 
people I worked with in the past and people who I'm working with now, or in the, or I guess not the future, well, I guess the future, and bring them all together. And then we all make a song together. And that's the crazy thing. And um, yeah, man, I think it's really cool to make all that type of music with different types of people and um, just experiment. And like, I see, I'm even down to make a song with you. You know what I mean? Like, like. Yeah. I, I'd love to send you some stuff. Yeah, bro. Like I'm always down. Like I make literally every type of genre except for country. I just don't do country. I just oh, there's some good. Country. Well, I, I I will. I love John Denver. I will. I will state that John Denver has a part of my heart. I love Denver. I don't. I don't know if I know much like current country music. That's I like, don't know any. I only know Denver things to me but they're like they're song like little lonely wise and they're mm. like um a lot of those songs that are like from that vein that are really um where there's something to take from there yeah but do you do you ever send just like voicemails or, or like voice memos to people of, of stuff oh yeah all the time i will like favorite way to collaborate because it's I think just it's, like a, pro, a living thing for me so I it's just so easy melody or like send someone a... because it's in your head at that moment and when you like when a creativity in your head sparks you randomly like remember i woke up randomly 2 a.m if i had this like weird melody in my head and then i just grabbed my phone and i just started like i was half awake but half sleeping but i just kind of like you know sluggishly saying it like the tone whatever it was and then woke up the next day or whatever late that afternoon and then i went on the keyboards and i just tried to figure out like what notes was i trying to say and then try to put it together yeah yeah i've had many experiences that are similar to that um there was a song that i i listened to today it was on that uh it was on the album africa express and the production was like it was like there were these synths and she sung this melody on it I wasn't expecting. It was beautiful. And then at the end, there were just like these like male vocals that were just kind of like chanting what is like the mm. like the root yeah. of what she was singing the whole time. Mm. And I've really been loving African music. And like, yeah, man, the, um, the the rhythmic feel that they have the groove. Yeah, it just it opens up my like entire body. Like it makes my entire body move. Um, yeah man so I feel I, it and that and but when I heard that I was like that's why maybe I've been drawn to this music too because like there's something in there that's very like um you know just people chanting or just, just well it's people. it's it's like the whole culture there is super fascinating you know like you know going and learning about like because I had a world like music class, you know, we just learned about Africa and the drumming and the percussions and like, like the chanting, you know, the, it, there's, it's a meaning to the culture and um, it's beautiful. And it's like, I think every part of the world has something unique about them, you know, learning, you know, take like, take Bossa Nova, you know, in South Africa or not oh. South Africa, South America, sorry, yeah. South America, you know, like, it's a whole different form of jazz, you know, when they're playing those chords and the tempo is a lot quicker and it's crazy mm -hmm. to see that. Or you take, you know, um, I don't know, you take Africa, the didgeridoo or whatever, the, that instrument, you know, the whole tradition, but it has that like feeling and it's, it's, you know, music in general is just so unique and it's like, and people, and that's the beautiful thing about it is that we all connect to it. It's like universal language, but we all, for some reason, can understand it through the type of chords or sounds or tones, as you want to say it. Yeah, I hope that we can all understand it. I think we probably all understand it, even if, even if many people don't, don't know what, that they understand it or what they're understanding about it. No, um, yeah. And I think, you know, I guess another question I was curious, um, is when uh, you went to Texas and, you know, with Brockhampton, did you ever make music with them, per se, or anything like that, or, like, collab with Romil or any of those guys? Because you had them in Candyman. Yeah, so we collaborated on the music video, which, yeah. like, I had to nudge them a little bit to even to do that. But they were, they, and then as soon as we did it, it was just, like, so much fun. and um. 
everyone like just through that pulled themselves in. like that noise at the end where Kevin is in the camera is like mm-hmm. like no one told him to do that <laughs> like, he just did his own thing <laughs> he just all of a sudden did that and it was so perfect so like um so we did that Romil made me a beat and I never really rapped on it um yeah I think honestly at that time I was just I wasn't sure like where I was going as an artist because I was like uh they were my friends and we had very different musical directions I think Mm -hmm. um and I've like collaborated with uh uh oh man this is my memory right now um I've collaborated with, uh, let's see, his, I know who this is, let's see his face. I've collaborated with, oh my God. I've collaborated on some songs, but they never came out. Okay. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And... Uh, there's I, I and I still talk to. Um, Do you still talk to them and all that? Like the members, are y'all still close and all that stuff? I still talk to. I only talk to one of them um, okay. now, still, and I think that's just because. I mean, they became so in there, like. I'm sure their life is just very different yeah. and, and running. So, and I was just in a whole different, so um, there wasn't exactly a reason to. Uh, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's not really a bad thing. Like I, I'm, I can be a nostalgic person so I can go into those feelings, but um. But it seemed, but at this point, it's pretty much an, a natural thing that that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And I get that, and that's okay. And I think that's beautiful. You know, um, I think it's important to you know follow your gut, and you know, as you're saying, like when it's the right moment, so when it's the right moment, and that's all that matters. And because um, I think overall, the message here is like be true to yourself, and um, um, learn your mistakes and you know keep flourishing yeah Mm -hmm. i think that's definitely the goal here and everything and i guess you know um what is i guess the only other question here for fantastic is uh what are what are the future goals you know what are your future goals uh in the next Uh let's say next right now i guess what what are your main goals here I'd like to finish this album that I've been working on, which is like completely self-produced. And it's mm. really like the most exciting music I've ever created. Ooh. I'm so excited about it. Um, uh, but I haven't been connected to the, I have, like I've been moving around. Things have just been kind of unstable. I've been moving around a lot. Mm. I've lost my drum and I'm over here. So like, um, and like I have recording stuff set up here, but I haven't, this hasn't been like a place that I've really like, been recording at um i've kind of been like i'm i'm really um gonna have my own place soon so that i can like really come back to that to the music and finish it the way that i want to um so there's that uh and music videos for it which i i was working with a producer uh because that's one thing also that i it's like funny that I didn't say that when um, in some ways I've been working on, on my, myself and my mind just mostly. Mm. Uh, and uh, I was working, I was working with this producer or this um, videographer and we just reached ahead because he just, he was, he couldn't, he really couldn't see me. And he, he also um, he really kind of, uh, attacked me um and i had to just cut things and just be like i, yeah. I can't, I can't you work. Gotta take out the toxic people in your life that's it's so important and it sucked because it was like there a person what what happened to me is like i went through kind of the spiritual community and 
um, sometimes it's all love can also kind of cover up mm -hmm. that people aren't really making anything that's good, like of quality. Yeah. So you need, so I wasn't able to find really like, there's all times people like, oh, I'll shoot that. I take pictures, blah, blah, blah. But it was just like, but I really, this is something that I've, like, you know, like this is something I grew up doing. So like, I, I know how I want things to be. Yeah. I, I, you have like, a certain sound, you know, that makes you. For you. Um, so there's like, and the quality of it does matter to me. So like, um, and that's so what I, it should be. Yeah, and because and it, because it, it elevates us, it's mm -hmm. it elevates us to see something that's really great. It, it connects us to like something that's, oh, that's us, but it's not me, but it could be something mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> so like, yeah, so I was working with him, and um, when we first started working, he was like, I feel like we're these, we're both these people, because he came from Hollywood, and he was like working mm -hmm. and all around Hollywood and he worked on these different movies and he was working on his first feature film. And, um, and it's still like, we're, we're, I don't know when our, when or if a relationship with this person would resurface, uh, it might never. And it, there's no like, um, I'm not mad at this person or anything. It was just that at the beginning they said, I feel like we're both these, these people that like, want to do this but don't want to do it in the hollywood way you want to do it kind of like in a more real relation genuine and i just had this i was just like and that's who i am like that's how i when that's how i live like i just through and through so i sort of had this feeling of like does he really mean that like i just felt like he doesn't really mean that like he doesn't he doesn't know what that really is like he thinks he wants that he doesn't fully understand what he wants. He doesn't fully understand what that, what it is to like, to what, what that, what working with that actually is like. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so eventually it was like, we, we've been shooting this scene a, a few times, maybe like three or four times. And um, I was getting stuck on it because it was, to me, it was about the emotional process. And it was like, I was trying to get to a place where I could just be there in front of the camera and not have anything else going on. And he kind of just like got frustrated and blew up on me and just verbally kind of attacked me. And um, Yeah, man, I think, I think, yeah, if they don't get the vision, you know, yeah. then, then it's not going to work. You guys got to have that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to sound like a, crazy hippie but you gotta actually have that spiritual connection or like you feel this you're on the same wavelength or creativity because if they're not on that same creativity or that like passion you're on then you're just wasting your time that's the bottom line he was only able to understand me as like a concept that really mm. on experience yeah. and every time i tried to be like this is what i'm talking about he'd be like oh it's like this it's like this it's like this and i'd be like <laughs> And you're just, actually literally sh showing, yeah. Over and over again. Um, and the video, it's, it was frustrating because it was like the video, like we really had something and it was mm. just like, there was so much there and I still have footage from it, but I couldn't work with him anymore. And yeah. it was also like, I'm also sort of hyper aware of like some of the demo, like what is inside of the music that I make now and like who it's going to affect. And I'm not interested in making music that's like, hard or is that i'm interested in making music that like communicates yeah like, bro that's i feel it yo bro we gotta make music because i feel that because i think it's so we've important all, we've been through some of this pro like some of this transformation yeah i yeah because i think it's so you know i'm all about connecting people through the music and feeling a certain way and i love taking certain sounds and not making your typical average whatever four four you know time signature song like i don't know if you know but like but like people who have who do like know me i play the sitar you know classical indian music and um i love just you know bringing different cultures together and taking that and then maybe throw a bossa nova and just see where it can go and then make this weird feeling that's and bring favorite. people together so i think gorillas are like one of my favorite groups because they're, they're the way that they connect different. Yeah. That, yeah. I'm so interested.
because they, because they, what, what they bring to the table, it's crazy, you know, and it's crazy uh, how everyone met, you know, I, I, I still think it's crazy how everyone met. And I really believe it's through like Twitter and SoundCloud, how everyone, because you, you remember the era, you know, uh, I remember it was like 2015. I, I wasn't even thinking. It just happened. It like, just happened. It just happened. It wasn't even thinking. It just, it I all happened. I wasn't thinking anything. I was just dead and like, and I could, and I knew what I was doing, but it wasn't, it's not, the, it's a different kind of knowing. No. Yeah. I get it. I I get it. And it just happened. And I'm so glad it happened because it definitely inspired a lot of people and like how it all went down. And yeah, man, I just remember, I look back on those memories and I look, and of course I'm living in, I'm trying to live in the moment, but I, I just, it makes me really happy because I get a big grin on my face of like going back to all your guys' music and even the videos and everything you guys put out and like, it's crazy how like the next wave of kids, you know, what they're going to be like. And um, hopefully they get to see your guys' type of music and art or photography or poetry or whatever you guys did, because it's truly, like I said, it's truly uh, magnificent. And it, it hit me, at, you know, it made me feel a certain way. And now I'm making music and, and I'm somehow I have this podcast that, you know, it's, and it's a blessing to even get you guys on here because wow. to me, like I listen to your guys' music and, um, you know, a, yeah, I am a fan for sure. But also I feel like we all are very similar and we all have like same mindsets and it's just great to connect with you guys and build like, not even like, like, yeah, definitely cool to clap, but also build just less friendship because I like, I think, you know, yeah, I, 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 that's what I'm, I'm, when you start talking about London, I never really got to know London. And that's, yeah, this is, this is exciting for me too. Yeah, exactly, man. You're just meeting new people. And I think that's the best thing about life is like, or whatever society is like, I'm meeting new people. Look, we just create a bond, a moment together. You know what I mean? Like, like, and that's just amazing. And, um, you know, and we just meet more and more people. And then like, from having this bond or moment that you and I just have right now in this podcast, you know, we have connections that we show each other and I can't wait for you to meet all my friends and all the other music people I know and all the people you know. And it's just like we, and then everyone just gets to know everyone. And this is this big free house family, you know, which is just like one love. And that's the goal is love. And yeah. It makes you feel, um, it makes you feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. And like and like you can keep other people safe too. Mm, yeah, like you that. really do. You really do. And and they're just you're just with like-minded, creative people. And the beautiful thing is, like when you're creating, someone could have this crazy idea you didn't even think about and add it to you know whatever you're working on. And that's what's the beautiful about it. it. Doesn't even have to be music. It could be poetry, the line, or art with a painting. Maybe if you did this or any creative thing, anything through the arts, which or photography, or a certain angle, yeah. or anything. I'd love to. I hope that some of my friends um, in St. Pete right now and some of the artists that I've been like connected to see this. And, and yeah, man. Shout out to yes. Sh shout out to everyone, you know, shout out <laughs> to all. Shout out to that wave, the 2013, 14, 15, you know, wave 16, like at 17, you know, like I, it was, I think it was 15 where I started 15 and 13 and 15 for I really was like, yeah meeting like learning about everyone and um yeah man that yeah honestly it'd be great to get wow. everyone on here and um just flourish together but yeah man i think this was this was this was great for grantastic to have you on Jorge. I, i'm thankful <laughs> to have you on here um you're definitely going to come on again for sure you yeah know, it, it, we would love to have you um on here you should and, do some live to make music together live or something yeah See, and I'm so down to do that. Like, fantastic, you know, like I told you, it's definitely like a spiritual, like learning to like be true to yourself and love yourself. But also, you know, it is a podcast, you know, to learn about the artist because some people might not know who you are. So I definitely want to give a background of that. But yeah, I am always down to make some music or have some type of thing because it'd be wonderful to do with you all and um, just flourish. That That's the goal is to flourish. Yeah, 
that's I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna savor that longer. Yeah, man. Well, um, thank you for being on Grantastic. Um, we had a great moment here with you, and yeah. we love you, and we want you to succeed in life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. I'm like, I I don't even know how I found you, but I knew that I needed to have a conversation with you. So, bro, that's the beautiful thing. Like, I think I followed you, and you followed me, and somehow you saw my post of Grantastic, and you you hit me up and I was like fuck yeah this is amazing and uh, we're yeah. just getting we're just getting the day ones on here you know which is yeah. great from you to John Walsh then from Sam Franklin who's one of my close friends um, who I met through SoundCloud and stuff um, but he's 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 a day one and um, you another person and then a college friend of mine and now you it's it's great getting all these people it's like a second childhood. Yeah, for real, though. <laughs> All right. Well, this is fantastic, everyone. And we love you. And have a good night or morning or afternoon, wherever, whenever you're watching this. So, yeah, we out.